Well, hello there, Vineyard family. It's Pastor Steve. And uh, can I just say right off the bat, this is a little weird. I know some of you are on your couch. Some of you are probably still in bed watching us. That's okay. But we miss you. So right out of the gate, we just want to say we miss you, but we're glad that you are joining us today. We're going to move into some worship, but before we do, I've got just a couple of uh, thoughts. Many times we say that we're one church in multiple locations, and we call out Grape Road. So Grape Roaders, hey. But the really cool thing is this morning, we are one church in a whole lot of locations around the area. It's kind of cool to think that the church has left the building and in homes in many uh, areas, in many cities around our area, we're about ready to worship like crazy. So that's kind of exciting for me. One church, tons of locations. Second thought I had, and I I read this actually yesterday morning, someone posted it. Uh, You know, when we're all sort of sheltered in our homes and we're thinking, now what are we going to do? What's going on in this crazy time? I just want to remind you that the Apostle Paul was in prison or homebound, sort of locked up in home for quite some time and still happened to write more than half of the New Testament and do a ton of ministry. So Even though we might be in our homes more than we might like, there's still opportunity to worship and pray and do good ministry. And so I just want to encourage you this morning, there's still good stuff to do. We're going to be great. So here's here's what I want you to do. I want you to get comfortable while you worship. So some of you have always wanted to turn it up even louder. I'm giving you permission in your home. You can do that. Some of you have wanted to sit through worship. You can do that. Some of you want to stand. But here's what we're going to do together in our homes around the area. We are going to worship Jesus. So are you ready? I am ready. So let me pray. So Father, this is an opportunity in one church in multiple locations, tons of locations around the area to worship you. And so, God, we look forward to this time as a church family to lift your name high, to set our gaze on you and you alone. In Jesus' name, amen.
sing this together. When I was lost, you rescued me. When I was found, you set me free. As praise goes up, I believe. The walls are coming down. Yes, you are my strength when I am weak. You are my sight when I can't see. As praise goes up, this song to Jackson Road last week. It's called Thank You Song. We just want to encourage you to sing along as you feel comfortable.
You're the peace in all distress. You're the light that breaks the darkness. You're the mighty one the reason inside. You're the savior to the drowning. I was lost till you found me. You broke the chains that had bound me. We are declaring truth out loud. And oftentimes, uh, I know a truth in my head, like I know he's faithful in my head, but when I sing it out loud over and over again, it helps me believe it from my heart. Like from the depths of my soul, I will know that he is faithful. And so I want to encourage you, if you have not sang out loud yet, do it now. We're going to sing through this chorus again. And I want us to believe it. I want to sing it, out, sing it out in faith. And so let's sing this together. I'm so grateful that you're so faithful. And I'm so grateful that you're so faithful. You're my Savior, strong and true. Yes, you are. I'm so grateful that you're so
but I was just thinking and praying as we were singing that last song. I wonder how much when God looks down and says, wow, I've always wanted in people's homes to have this much worship and this much prayer going on. And so God, we just thank you for this opportunity that in our homes, we get to join together as a family. We get to join together. And even though we're watching, we get to share in worship to you in our homes. And so God, we just invite you at this time in our homes. Would you bring peace? Would you bring joy? Would you bring love as we focus our attention on you? You and you alone. You over the news. You over the whatever it is, God. Put our gaze upon you in our homes because we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks for worshiping in your home. How great was that? Here's what we're going to do. Normally, we greet one another, but guess what? We're going to give you 45 seconds to refresh your coffee. Kiddos, you can run around the living room if you want to, but get ready. We're going to be back in 45 seconds with some announcements, so don't go away. We'll be right back. Hello, there we go. Yay! Good morning, everybody. My name is Jimmy Fleshman, and I am the campus pastor at our Grape Road location. Yeah, great to be with you all this morning. Just wanted to say thank you for choosing to join us for church this morning. We are glad that you are here, and we hope that you have a great experience. If, we, if you are new with us, we would love to hear from you. And so if you could, text the word NEW to the number that's on your screen. Uh, doing so will get you some information about the church as well as get you, some, get you connected to some of the newcomer folks here at the church. Question, has anybody else had to adjust their plans the last two weeks? Yes, the answer is yes. And the same is true for us here at the church. Uh, we have had to reschedule or adjust many of the things on the calendar, and so we just want to make sure that you know how to stay up to date with everything that's happening at the church. And your place for everything Vineyard, including these updates, is the vineyard.info. And if you want to take that one step further and actually receive text message updates, simply text the word update to the same phone number and you will be among the first to hear what's happening here around the church. So those of you that know me may have some idea that this six foot social distancing thing is a problem for me. And so instead of this week passing out hugs and high fives, I've had to find a new way to love on people, which I've been making phone calls. And as, I've, as I have talked with some of you this week, I've noticed that something is different. It seems like there's a sincere appreciation for the phone calls. I think that people just really appreciate knowing that we're here, we're praying for you, and we're thinking of you. And, at, and during this time, I know that there are some of you who want to make a difference. And so we have created an opportunity uh, called the Care Crew Team. And if you are interested in caring for some of those during this season through practical ways such as making phone calls, praying for folks over the phone, or maybe even going grocery shopping, you should head to the vineyard.info and click on the care crew button. And for some of you, maybe you are in need. And so we want to just let you know that we are here for you and we would love to hear from you. And so if you could do the same and go uh, to the vineyard.info and click on the care crew button, we would love to hear from you.
So now we are getting ready to move into our message time. And so we'd ask that you put yourself, nah, you don't have to do anything with your cell phones this morning. Uh, but I know that Pastor Mark has a great message for us this morning. And so I'm going to pass it back to him. Here's Pastor Mark. Thanks, Sir Jimmy. Hey, everybody, good morning. Uh, like Jimmy said, I'm uh, Mark Pope. I'm the lead pastor at the church, and uh, it is really, really good to be with you. I, uh, but I'm struggling because I, I want to give hugs and stuff. So air high five something? Some of you are sitting there on the couch right now. Go ahead. No one's watching. It's just you. Give me an air high five. Hug. Hug. Ready? Virtual hug. Is this creepy? Is it creepy? Is this creepy? Let's get creepy. All right. <laughs> oh, gosh. What an interesting time we're in. Uh, I do want to get into some uh, things maybe more important than the air hug thing. Uh, hey, regarding the offering, we don't pass a plate throughout our homes during times like these. Uh, but I just wanted to thank so many of you for con continuing to be generous with the church. Even though last week we still met at the facility, many of us did because we could do that. Um, I think our numbers were about in, in half, but our offering was still really, really good. And so I just want to express my appreciation to those of you who are just faithful to give to ministry give to God no matter kind of what's going on. So uh, thank you for your generosity towards the church. It helps us keep assessing and establishing ministry throughout our community, even in times like these. So thank you for that. You can do that online. Uh, the offices are still open through the week at this point, so you can drop that off at the church if you would like. The other thing is it really uh, honors God and it keeps him arguably keeps him involved. I think when we, by faith, give our tithe, when we give money away, especially in financial times that are filled with tension, it is, I think of it a lot of time as a prayer, like, Lord, I'm trusting you more than I'm trusting the stock market. I'm trusting you more than I'm afraid of, right? So uh, thanks for that. And uh, last thing before we pray for the offering, if your finances, uh, like you, you're now not working, Please don't feel compelled to give an offering or to tithe on nothing, right? You, you're, so we're going to be praying for you. If there are ways we can help you, let us know. Uh, we realize that everyone's financial situation is different. And for those of us who still have an income coming in, make sure that we're considering being generous with the people around us. Got it? Hey, let's pray. Boy, that was a long offering announcement, wasn't it? Let's pray. Father. As many of us will uh, give to you again this week, just to acknowledge your faithfulness in our lives, we hope that you feel loved and honored, and maybe even more than usual, will you give us as a church incredible wisdom with any ministry decision we need to make, because we are committed to keep ministry moving forward. Show us how to do that. We want to be phenomenal stewards of every dollar that comes into the church. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you have a Bible, you can open to the book of Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Of course, you can use your smartphone or if you're on your laptop, you want to look that up. And to get us started, I thought of a movie scenario where at least what I picture is kind of like the um, command post of an aircraft carrier, or we got an image that might help us uh, think of that. So this isn't a great image, but, but you're in like some kind of a military command post. It could be you're someone, they're in the Oval Office, and they're having a significant conversation because there is some kind of a threat going on, and somebody who is in charge, like the president or a general or some high up person says something like this, ready? Take us to DEFCON 3, or what, right? Have you heard that term? Like, let's go to DEFCON, that thing. And, 
And so people go, take a DEF CON 3. And there's always, maybe not always, it seems like there's somebody in the room that when we say go to DEF CON 3, there's somebody who goes, what does that mean? Or they have the guts to ask somebody, What's, what is happening? And somebody else will acknowledge, I don't know, we've never been here before. Now, can you picture that idea from a movie or a scenario? Yes? No? It feels like that right now. Anybody remember what it was like 10 days ago? Oh, it was like normal life. And now it seems really different. By the way, I found this meme uh, that actually had the word DEF CON in it. Can we put it up on the screen? It's right. Take us to DEF CON 5. It's Lysol time. <laughs> I thought, that. Yeah, that's it. A couple thoughts. This morning, I do not want to raise or heighten the DEF CON situation. I'm not going to try to make it, you know, more intense than it is. But I do think that it's appropriate to acknowledge for most of us, we've not been here before. Yes, we've had difficult situations or stressful times or financial ups and downs. Most of us have done that. But this feels right now like kind of a new place. And we're probably going to be here for a few weeks. And so let me just give you just a few truths uh, to get us started. First of all, there is uh, this kind of an idea of DEF CON and the intensity of the moment. Uh, this is not new to humanity, okay? These things happen. I was thinking through the, the biblical narrative, and I'm sure in the Old Testament, in uh, the book of Exodus, when, and some of you may know the story, when Pharaoh told the Israelites that they were going to have to continue to make bricks, but they were no longer going to give them straw to make bricks. I'm sure it felt like for them, like Def Con 3. Like, well, what? What? How can we, we can't, how, right? There was somebody going, no way, how are we going to, there was an, an anxiety level went up. I'm also reasonably sure that when the disciples were from a not too far away watching Jesus die on the cross, even though he had told them that this was going to, I'll bet their anxiety level, their worry level, their how are we going to get through this level began to go off. Somebody was like, what's this? This DEF CON 3. What, what's it mean? I don't know, but it's going to be way different. Probably felt some of that after Jesus had risen from the grave and then he imparted power to the church and then he rose uh, into the sky in front of them, which I think would be super cool. Wow, this is amazing. Until they'd look at each other and go, you know, now what are we going to do? What are we going to do now? So it's part of human experience. We've had these moments before, probably most of us, unless we're very young, personally. I know when my mom passed away this last summer, everything felt very different and changed and difficult. I don't know that this, this is a DEF CON uh, moment, but over the past several months, my wife and I have become empty nesters. And there have been several times when we've thought, how does this, how does this work? So you probably have things like that in your life. Another important truth as we get started, <clears throat> there's not one time that I can think of in the Bible that God ever went on DEF CON anything. Can you hear this? Some of the things that we feel, the anxieties, the uncertainties that we have, God doesn't have them. God doesn't have them. If you're sitting next to somebody, there, just turn to the person and say, God doesn't have them. He's on a whole nother level of peace. I was looking up this morning in my God time. How do you know when some of us have more time now, you can do even more God time, more Bible time. So this morning I was thinking through, there are dozens of times in the Bible that God is referred to as the God of peace. Say peace. He's the God of peace. Also, there's a description in Galatians chapter 5, I think it is. It should come up on the screen with me. 
Galatians 5, 22, 23, these are characteristics of the Holy Spirit, fruit of the Spirit. And it says the fruit of the Spirit is, let these sink in, right? This is, this is who God is. This is where God lives. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy, peace. By the way, none of these characteristics increase my anxiety level. It tends to bring us down. Love, joy, peace, forbearance. Another word for that is faithfulness. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those are the kind of characteristics that are just part of who God is. And yet, here we are in the midst of these interesting, <laughs> interesting days. So hold those thoughts. We're in, uh, we are taking a break from our series called Sent, and we're going to take at least a couple weeks, and we're going to talk about Christ in times of crisis. And today... We're going to explore uh, in Acts chapter 8 an unsettling time where the disciples had to, I guess, figure out how to do life in the midst of kind of a new normal. And so let me give you the background in Acts 8. Jesus has come. He has served. He's been incredibly uh, powerful and miraculous. He's died on the cross for our sin. And he's risen and uh, now imparted into the church the same type of ministry that he was doing so that the ministry would keep on going. The religious leaders of Jesus' time thought that if they would kill Jesus, this whole Jesus thing, this whole Christianity thing would stop. It didn't work. But they're in a season now where... The disciples and the followers are doing the same type of ministry that Jesus was doing. And so in this, at this point in the text, they're deciding, let's kill some of the Christians. And they think that will stop the ministry of God. And so they have just killed a remarkable Christian. The religious leaders have uh, killed a remarkable Christian named Stephen. And we'll pick it up in Acts chapter 8, verse 1. And Saul approved of their killing him. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem. And all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. But Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and pulled them, I'm sorry, and put them in prison. Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the signs he performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. For with shrieks, impure spirits came out of many, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was great joy in that city. So again, we're starting, and this is part one of, a, of a, at least a couple-week talk on Christ in times of crisis and I'm going to give you a couple ideas that I think will help us in these uncertain times. So before we do that, let me pray. Father, right now there's probably a lot of different emotions happening with the 100, 200, 300, 400 people that we're gathering here virtually. Some of us are kind of panicked. Some of us maybe are kind of mad because we're not at church or... Some of us are doing okay, but all of us are going to be going through this new situation. Even though it's temporary, we're going to be walking through some things 
uh, over the next days, probably weeks. So will you help this message lay a foundation for navigating these times well? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So I've got two ideas from the text that will help us in uncertain times. The first one is this. You can write this uh, down on a piece of paper if you'd like to write this down. Of course, this uh, message, will, you'll be able to go back and revisit it online if you'd like. But I have some things you can write down. In uncertain times, a scattering happens. Just you can write down scattering. A scattering happens. This is just an observation from, was it verse 1? Right? On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were, there it is, here's this word, scattered. Looked it up in the original language. It means scattered. It's a verb. Pronounced something like diaspora. Dias, that. It's like that. That's diaspora. To scatter throughout, to disperse. And <laughs> put in parentheses there a little bit. It means to disperse and it can imply into a foreign land. And just as a little side note, doesn't it feel like all of a sudden we're living in a foreign place? Like this is way different. This different, just different country. This is a different community. At least it feels that way. So this idea of being scattered. Now my initial thoughts is this was not just this was not either a good thing or a bad thing. It just is kind of a thing. It just happened that scattering happened. But the more I thought about it, I landed on the general principle that this idea of scattering is not a good idea with God. And if you push it a little farther, scattering generally is associated with the enemy of our soul or the devil or evil. Scattering is generally associated not with God, but with, with evil. In Luke chapter 11, and if you look at the verses before, I think it's verse 21, 22, Jesus is teaching on the characteristics of Satan or the enemy and he gets to verse 23 and he says, Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. Jesus by nature is a gatherer of people, of his people, and the enemy by nature likes to scatter people. It's not unlike, this is a, um, I haven't had this thought before, but it's not unlike the shepherd, the good shepherd, you could refer probably to John chapter 10. The good shepherd gathers sheep. And when an enemy comes in, the flock runs away. I was, uh, the last time our small group met. By the way, keep meeting or connecting with your small group, you guys. And if you're curious about getting in a virtual group, contact Keith at the vineyard.org. Or just go to care at the vineyard dot click something at the vineyard dot org and say hey i'm interested in a group we'll make sure we get that information to keith and different people all right get in a group um where was i that was this a group commercial oh we were in our group the last time our group met and i forget how we got there but i uh, explored a, a text that to me is really kind of striking in titus chapter 310 it says warn a divisive person once Again, we're talking about scattering. A divisive person, warn them once, and then warn them a second time. And after that, look how, look how harsh this is. It almost feels extreme. After that, if you, if, with a divisive person, warn them once, warn them twice. And if they don't stop, it says, have nothing to do with them. That is, feels so extreme from a biblical command. And I would argue some of it is because the end, division is that's so similar to scattering, and we're, that's not God's heart. But it's part of what the enemy does. I want to dwell just a little bit on how the enemy uh, increases uh, scattering. And I would submit to you it has to do with exaggeration. It has to do with exaggeration. Um, let 
Jim's just pausing, get back to my notes. I'll, I'll get back to you in a second. All right, exaggeration. Let me go to a verse that if you've been around the church long or connected with uh, our teaching here, you may have heard me say this before. But if you go to Genesis chapter 3, it's one of the first descriptions we have of the enemy. And the enemy is going to divide or mess up the Garden of Eden. Going to divide humanity from God, that kind of thing. And in verse 1 it says, The serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, now you got to really look at this, pay attention, pay attention. He said, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Folks, that is such a huge exaggeration. He is planting the thought of, oh my, you can't eat anything in the garden, which is so not reality. God had created the garden with this plethora of trees. I can't believe I, I use the word plethora. I'm not sure. Is that the way plethora? Like bunch of trees. There was only one tree you couldn't eat. And the enemy's focusing on that and trying to expand it into this huge exaggeration to get the, to get the woman off balance and to do some silly things. So the enemy is by nature an exaggerator. He's kind of saying, so panic, all the fruit, you can't eat any of the fruit, none. So if you haven't made a little note yet, you might just write down, um, uh, watch out for exaggeration. Does that make sense? Just write that down. In the midst of our present situation, watch out for exaggeration. Just write down, watch out for exaggeration. I want to focus on one that I think would be easy for us to fall into right now. And it's this. Are you ready? Remember two weeks ago oh, when everything was great? And now, see, that's an exaggeration. I just exaggerated. Everything was not great two weeks ago, okay? Just to be clear. But what it feels like now is this increase of volume of a voice that's saying everything has changed. Folks, everything has changed. Have you felt that? Everything, everything has changed. And I had this thought, uh, when was it? Tuesday or Wednesday? When I was having this feeling of, oh, everything's changed. And I was sitting out on my front porch doing Bible time as, this, as the sun was coming up. And in my brain, I was going, oh no, oh no. And I realized, folks, not everything has changed. My front porch was still my front porch. And I looked off, and uh, our dog, just so you know, our dog was... I didn't wake up in the morning and go to the front porch and realize our dog is gone. The dog is gone. Well, why is the dog gone? Because everything has changed. Also, we didn't have a cute, wonderful poodle as a dog. I still had my mutt-looking dog. It, it didn't change. By the way, I took a picture yesterday morning. There's my dog. It, it, I was just kind of thinking as I'm watching the dog do the same thing it does every morning. He's out scratching his back in the, in the grass. And I'm like, don't you know, Bailey, everything has changed. It's like Bailey's looking at me like nothing's changed. I'm good. I'm, everything's good. So just to be clear, folks, not everything has changed. I did not go to bed last night and look over and see some woman and go, who are you? And, sh and she would say, well, I'm your new wife because everything's changed. <laughs> that would be, right? That's not. I didn't, I didn't uh, our 19-year-old who's now back from college because they closed that down, it was the same 19-year-old that we had and gave birth to. Well, I didn't give birth to. My wife did a great job 19 years ago. I don't have a new daughter. We still have the same, in our house, I still have the same average coffee that I drink. But just, are you getting this? Nobody called me this week and said, hey, yeah, this is your new best friend. No, no, it was still my old best friend. Pause. Will you think with me for just a moment? Give an estimation of what percentage of your life is still exactly the same it was two or three weeks ago. 
I was thinking about this just this morning. A bunch of our life is still the same. So let me give you, finish this point with some hints on navigating some change, right? Because some things are changing. So the first idea is filter information. You might want to write that down. Filter information. Just be aware when someone starts to talk a little crazy about how everything's changed and the world's coming to an end and, and they, they exaggerate, right? They exaggerate. What's the social distancing uh, guideline? Six feet, right? And you can see it in their eyes like you're about, you're 16 feet from them and they're already like, you don't come any closer. That's not, just to be clear, that is not, the, the, the directive is not stay 60 feet from everybody. Six feet. These people know what they're talking about. I did get some groceries this week and, and uh, some vineyard folks said, hey, Pastor Mark. And I remember real quickly, I worked through, but I remember thinking, can I say hi to you or can I not say hi to you in the store? Am I going to get arrested for saying hi to some folks? Just don't let exact filter, don't let exaggeration take over. Filter the information that you have. Another idea, enjoy what is still normal. Mmm, coffee, friendship. Enjoy the things that are still so normal. By the way, some of your lives have changed almost none because you're still sitting at home online and watching Netflix. You, you net, two weeks ago before any of this started, you, were, you Netflix binged regularly and you're still doing it. So enjoy what is still normal. In case you haven't noticed, spring is coming. What would you normally do? Go for a walk. Begin to work outside. Uh, I don't know where to put this, uh, but folks, I do think that there's, it, there's good wisdom in uh, pausing either by yourself or with your family and consider what kind of projects are we going to take on. And don't just think of projects in the natural. Some of us are going to have an opportunity over the next few weeks to start a spiritual project. Maybe you always wanted to read the entire uh, Bible. You wanted to listen through the, uh, you know, read one of the Gospels without stopping. You wanted to pray every, look, you wanted to pray every day for your children. How about now? Start some spiritual projects. The last uh, hint before we finish up this talk, uh, be a relatively peaceful voice. And I would encourage everybody, if you're connected to the vineyard, we need to be a reasonably peaceful voice. Because some people really need it. I do have some good news. Uh, I found out about World Panic Day. Did you know this was a day? I found this information. I was looking up World Panic. It's a copyright, copyrighted holiday invented by Thomas and Ruth Roy. And it's celebrated each year. This is not a new thing. They didn't, it's celebrated each year on March 9th. Now, here's the good news. World Panic Day is over. It's already gone. Whew, that's good to know, isn't it? Uh, last thing before we get done with this point. Some of you are thinking, you're never going to get done with this point. This is forever. I want to go back to live church because Pastor Mark just talks and talks and talks and talks. If your life is significantly challenged right now, we've set up uh, an email address at the church just called care at the vineyard.org. Don't be so prideful that you will not reach out and say, I'm emotionally struggling, struggling, or I've lost my job because of the coronavirus, and my finances are going to get wacky. Um, relationally, financially, emotionally, just go to care at the vineyard. Click the link. Let us know what's going on. And we're also going to have, we have some people going there and saying, how can I help? How can I help? How can I help? So we want to be helpful. In uncertain times, a scattering happens. The only other thing I want to talk about is un in uncertain times, the ministry continues. And I feel like I've already kind of transitioned into that. The ministry continues. In verse 4 of our text, those who had been scattered 
preached the word wherever they went. Ministry went on, continued to happen. In a uh, staff meeting, because the offices have remained open and we were doing a meeting planning uh, our service for the weekend, Cameron Clark, who was responsible for the meeting. By the way, some pictures of Cameron, just so you know. Yeah, he still looks the same. No, everything's changed. No, it hasn't. Cameron still looks the same. Uh, he was leading out in this meeting and praying, and I just so appreciated his prayer. In fact, I should have been praying. Confession time, I should have been praying along with him. But he started praying, and I thought, oh, this is a great prayer for this, this time we're in. And so I just opened my laptop. I'm just writing some of the stuff that Cameron was praying. And it was like this. It was like, you're still good, saying to God. You're still good. We have more blessings than we can count. We still know about the greatest news ever been, that has ever been spoken. It was a great prayer of vision and purpose and continuing as we lean in to figure out how to do ministry. On Thursday of this week, uh, one of the staff brought in a guy uh, named Mike and um, came to my office. It was Pastor Jimmy uh, brought Mike to my office. He said, hey, Mark, you got a minute? And he introduced me to Mike, who had just become a Christian. They were just talking and and God, through Pastor Jimmy, had led this guy to Christ. Mike was so excited. He came in. He had his new Bible. He was super pumped. And, and you know what I didn't say? Oh, I'm so sorry, Mike. You can't become a Christian because COVID-19 is really what we're doing right now. I'm so sorry. But that your prayer to receive Jesus really didn't work because we have to keep social distance right now. That, is that? No way. And... Something probably worth considering. How many of us became Christians during an uncertain time in life? Waving your hand. And some of you right now in this uncertain time could be part of your testimony because you're not Christians yet. You're, you're, maybe you've been visiting the church, been coming to church. Maybe you're joining us. You don't even come to this church. Can I tell you right now, now is a great time. Any time is a great time to explore and give your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ who never changes, who is above these things, who can help us walk through things. He can forgive our sin. They're just like, it's a great time. To do ministry and come to Jesus. So if you want to write something down, you can just write down, think ministry. Right? In the midst of extra time, think ministry, friend. So proud of my wife who uh, got the word yeah, two days ago that... She'll not be working. She may work a tiny bit, but basically the office where she works is uh, uh, closing. And when she got the news, it wasn't an hour later, she said, you know what? I think what I'm going to do is begin to make a plan for, and you know what she started to talk about? The ministry opportunities that she will have because she will have more time. She talked about, I guess I could connect with the neighbors that I don't connect with regularly. And she, it was just, and I, I was just looking at her thinking, gosh, you're great. And she, it's just a great example of in, the midst of in the midst of having extra time and when things are like this. Think ministry. Start a spiritual project. I already talked a little bit about that earlier in the talk. Bob posted several days ago on Facebook after they gave, put out the guideline to meet in, uh, to avoid gathering in groups over 10. Remember when that came out six days ago or whatever it was? <laughs> I snatched this Facebook post from, from Bob. This is creative. There it is. Looking for nine people who want to hang out. <laughs> That's a great mentality, right? Make some adjustments and keep on moving forward. There we go.
Huh. I'll finish with this. Vineyard family. The only challenge and risk that there is right now in our uh, situation, of course there's the risk of some people uh, getting sick. All those are, are significant things and more people getting sick. But the other risk is that you and I would not just suffer from an illness, but we would suffer from spiritual drift. That we would scatter, the enemy might take us down, pick us off, or the other risk is that we might miss some of the opportunities that God is putting before us to be very unique, very unique in the midst of DEFCON 3 or wherever we are, we should be living differently. So, in uncertain times, a scattering happens and the ministry continues. Uh, I'm going get to get ready to do a, a closing prayer. Pastor Steve's going to join us. So don't disconnect right after the closing prayer because we have some creative ways that you can keep connected. You can get personal prayer. And so Steve's going to walk through those things. But right now, let's pray.